So hello, uh, good afternoon uh, at this session, the third session OA Books uh, Workouts, uh, organized by the OA Books uh, Network. Um, today we have uh, Mikkel Skis in our midst, um, who will be introduced by me uh, later on, and who will do a presentation on his uh, book project, Film Studies uh, in Motion. Um, so, oh, this is not going well, that's okay. Let's see, why it doesn't, yes, there it is. Um, so I will do a very short introduction um, about the series uh, and introducing Miklos, then Miklos will uh, take some time to present his uh, project, uh, Film uh, Studies in Motion from audiovisual essay to academic research video. And you can see on the left, um, the online version uh, which is made in uh, Scalar, which is a, a publishing software, but Miklos uh, will um, uh, talk about this uh, later on. Um, and then uh, we will be having some questions and answers um, uh, about how he approached this uh, project. And of course, using um, this uh, software, for instance, um, because as you may know, if you have been um, watching the, the previous sessions that we won't, be very much talking about the real content of the book, but we will talk about how it is being made. So how uh, did it became an open access book in, uh, in all cases uh, and what methods um, in, in uh, looking at writing, uh, the production, the dissemination um, has been used to, um, uh, yeah, to come to, an, to, an, to a final open access uh, book. Um, and uh, we already did, so this is the third session and we already did two, two more to come in the next few months. Um, and we um, have this online session. We also make recording out of this um, and it will be uh, published on the uh, Open Access Books Network, um, Humanities Commons website. I will give you the link later on. Um, and we also publish um, this print PDF uh, interviews um, where we can um, bring in more, um, of course, details about the project, but also uh, give links to uh, uh, specific uh, uh, points to um, which which are being addressed in the in the in the call. Um, so this is for for reference uh, later on, hopefully uh, useful to to others. Um, and as said, uh, this is a growing collection on Zenodo. Uh, you can see the link on the. Uh, right side of the screen um, and yeah as I said uh, we have five sessions uh, organized now um, but if it's really um, yeah, um, if, if the community wants more we can think of uh, probably another um, series maybe in 2022. Um, as I mentioned this is part of the open access books network it's a network which is now one year old um, and we organize uh, several um, uh, sessions and, and events um, and write blogs about open access books in the broadest sense. Uh, so that can be uh, about funding, about um, practicalities like um, uh, contracting of copyright, uh, but also um, an, an series like this, talking about the how um, uh, on, 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 on open access book publishing. So. Um, this is a page on the Humanities Commons website. If you want to join the conversation, please become a member. Um, and then we can have a, a extended discussion uh, on that platform. Um, and what I all, always do is also mention this um, because we, we are talking about the practicalities of book publishing. Um, and this is a uh, also one year old um, uh, toolkit, an online toolkit, open access books toolkit. It's um, uh, hosted by the OAPEN platform, um, and as you can see on the uh, on the uh, the bottom, the right bottom side is had the research life cycle of the book. So planning and funding, conduct research, consider publishing options, but also write and submit manuscript. Also, peer review. Uh, in the previous sessions, we have been talking about open peer review, for instance. So all these aspects um, are of importance, I guess, for this uh, this series to talk about. Um, and it's a great helpful uh, resource uh, for you as a uh, possible future uh, book author, um, an open access book author, uh, to learn uh, about all these uh, all these uh, aspects. Um, 
so and now um, uh, going to uh, uh, the speaker of today, uh, Mikkel Skis, uh, who is an associate professor. And I read this out loud because you've changed uh, this uh, uh, this position uh, already uh, a year ago. But um, is associate professor of audiovisual arts and cognition at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. Um, and his research focuses on contemporary audiovisual me media intersecting the fields of narrative and cognitive film theories. And I remember, uh, Mikkels, we've, uh, we've met at a NEXT conference. NEXT is the Network of European Cinema Studies, um, I think a few years ago already. And um, it was just before the launch or you presented this uh, project. Um, and I think you were still um, working on that, on that when, when we talked about this. Um, uh, and now it's um, uh, a book an online resource uh, for a couple of years now. Um, and you made, you made use of this, um, uh, and I already mentioned this, this publishing software, Scalar, uh, which allows um, some interactivity, right, in the, in the book, uh, and also adding uh, multimedia, which is for, uh, for media studies, of course, an important aspect of um, uh, adding this to, uh, to, uh, to the article or to the book. So, um, without further ado, um, Miklos, um, go ahead and uh, uh, tell us more about how did you do it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jeroen. I will uh, yeah, yeah, I will stop sharing. And this is my opening slide. Yes. Is it all good? Yeah. Okay, thank Thanks you. More. So thanks, uh, Jeroen, once again for the kind invitation for this interview. And uh, well, I know you. Uh, more than more than ten years now, actually. So, but I think that was also uh, that was another next conference. It was even I know you from the time when you when you've been at AUP, maybe maybe in that next conference also. But then you've been at uh, Amsterdam University Press as a commissioner for for uh, for the domain of film studies. So it's really nice to reconnect again. And uh, to be honest, I was particularly happy to be involved because uh, because I know you as one of the leading experts of open access policies in the Netherlands. So, so an interview series uh, led by you means for me quality and certain acknowledgements uh, what, I'm, what I'm working uh, on. So having said this, I have to start with a big warning uh, for everyone uh, that I'm, poten I'm, I'm a potential odd one out in, in, in the list of the interviewees because uh, most of Jeroen's uh, uh, guests were not only published in an open access form, but in fact are experts in uh, developments concerning open access publishing and policies as far as I know. So I cannot pretend that I'm an expert of the field. What I have uh, today for you is a story, the story of my open access book project uh, that took shape uh, sometime between 2013 and 2016. So, and before I would start my approach, uh, to this talk and uh, to academic work and perhaps also probably to life in general is, is quite simple. Uh, I have some problems and these problems you know, require certain solutions. And this very presentation will also follow this very simple pattern of uh, my thinking. My brief presentation follows this path by uh, first introducing uh, the research topic, videographic criticism, that itself is a solution for a long existing, quite frustrating problem in the study of film and audiovisual media. And this leads to the specific problem of how to present research on videographic criticism, uh, which then have led me to the solution of an open access self-publishing idea. So that's the, that's, the, that's the little disclaimer. I have another disclaimer. And of course, that's also like a cheeky disclaimer. So before, before introducing the, the first problem, this disclaimer tells that I have to confess that uh, videographic criticism is only a hobby interest of mine. So my main line of research, as you introduced me, uh, deals with narrative and cognitive film theories. My specific interest lies with contemporary complex cinema, contemporary puzzle films, and most of my scholarly output, I have to admit in this context, uh, uh, including this uh, co-written monograph, it's Taven, deals with uh, 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 the cognitive approach to contemporary complex cinema, and uh, most of this scholarly output is arranged and distributed through uh, traditional publishing channels and platforms. So in advance, I have to say, although I see the value clearly and therefore support open access self-publishing, my project 
back in those times uh, has chosen for such publishing method, uh, not out of principle really, uh, but uh, out of necessity to tackle a specific problem I was back then facing with. And I quickly introduced this specific problem uh, now. Um, uh, so this is the, the first problem, let's say. In fact, this, this problem triggered this whole you know, chain reaction uh, up to this very interview. So the problem is best described by Mark, Par Mark Parker and Deborah uh, Parker in their 2011 book, The DVD and the Study of Film. And I quote them, one of the greatest ironies of film study is that its evidence has so limited a visibility in print form. So, uh, this quote, uh, which became uh, a motto of the book on videographic criticism, on the book what we're talking about, uh, practically nails the general problem of film criticism, film criticism, a problem uh, that has been um, famously defined by film scholar uh, Raymond Bellour in 1975, who in his seminal paper wrote about the comparative backwardness of film studies compared to literature and its quoting possibilities from the studied texts. Bellur claimed uh, films unattainable texts. Uh, for him, uh, the text of the film is unattainable because it is an unquotable text. So just to make it very short, this story videographic criticism is one of the possible solutions to this problem. Uh, in Andrew McWriter's words, of all the many developments in the short history of film criticism and scholarship, the video essay has the greatest potential to challenge the now historically located text-based dominance of film cultures. Uh, defined by one of the leading figures of the field, Jason Mittel and Christian Keatley, we define videographic criticism as creating videos that serve an analytic or critical purpose exploring and presenting ideas about films and moving images via sounds and images themselves. So as it seems, digitization and other uh, consumer friendlification, I'm sure that's not a word, but uh, I hope uh, you get me. So digitization and, and you know, developments of, of making these, these tools more consumer friendly, uh, also in price. So these kind of technological goods re uh, resulted now in a possibility of bridging this frustratingly long existing medial gap between an audiovisual art and its textual scholarship. As finally, we can talk about films in audiovisual form. We can talk about films audiovisually. So following YouTube's and other video sharing platforms appearance, videographic criticism uh, got wings uh, outside and inside academia, uh, following non-scholarly platforms like YouTube and uh, Vimeo channels, more and more academic journals appeared with full dedication to video essays or traditional text-based journals uh, dedicated some of, their, some of their sections to videographic work. Uh, most recently, videographic criticism has broken out of the, of the computer screen, finding its way to mobile screens and their dedicated apps like TikTok, and there is now TikTok film criticism. If you Google it, you'll find uh, brilliant examples. So anyway, as an, as an enthusiastic early adopter, uh, fascinated by videographic tinkering as both a novel research method and a communication mode about films, I started to make videos and also offered supervision uh, for my most uh, talented students uh, in Groningen. So of these, Thomas van den Berg, uh, stood out with the term paper, more precisely a 43 minutes video he submitted in 2013, June for my uh, MA course. So I was quite, uh, you know, amazed by the, by the quality of this video. Uh, at this time, I was already giving the opportunity to students to, to, to finish their, their courses uh, audiovisually not only as a traditional paper, but I was really, really uh, uh, delighted, uh, if nothing else, by the quality of this video. So I started to work with Thomas and quickly convinced him to write his thesis about the practice itself. So it was a brilliant video about some kind of complexity. I think it was for my MA course, uh, cinematic complexity, but I, I, I told him like, okay, Thomas, you have to write the thesis about the practice itself. So that became practically the backbone of our, uh, of our book. However, whatever excited we've been, we run into another problem, uh, clearly, 
uh, when we decided to turn this into a, into a book project. So we felt an absurdity, if not ridiculousness, of uh, writing a traditional textual book about an audiovisual method and mode of communication. Uh, not that such absurdity didn't exist throughout the entire history of writing about film, but we thought like, well, in the 21st century, that, that that's ridiculous. And especially if you write something about, you know, audiovisual essay in a textual form. So that was kind of contradiction. So specifically, we have faced with three uh, challenges. Uh, challenge number one was how to create a publication bridge. So create the same kind of medial bridge, what uh, videographic criticism uh, as a solution offered to the challenge of the study of film, the, the, the bridging this medial gap. So how to create a publication bridge, how to seamlessly merge written text and audiovisual, audiovisual material. Uh, uh, yeah, that was, that was clearly, clearly the biggest question. Also, we, 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 we felt certain urgency here. So our second question was about how to do this fast. We wanted to publish as soon as possible, given the, well, the hotness of the topic and the mounting concurrence we felt uh, on our back. So, and the third challenge was uh, about how to make this project uh, sustainable, which is about the general challenge of, of ephemerality, uh, everything what's online. Right, so specifically we asked ourselves how to tackle messy copyright issues around the videos we wanted to use and include as illustrations. So many of these videos, as we know, or you may know that, you know, you create a video, you upload it with all your best intentions under fair use policies and so on and so forth, but the next day it's removed from Vimeo, it's removed from YouTube. So there is, there is, there is, there is this, this insecurity about this. So we wanted to make a sustainable project, not some broken, full with broken links and so on and so forth. So we had our preliminary attempts for solution. These all turned out to be some kind of dead ends. The first one was like a naive attempt, making a PDF with embedded video. And actually it was technically possible, but rather unpublishable. So it didn't tackle the distribution challenge and it created some uh, really impossible files like a giga, gigabytes uh, uh, of, 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 of files. Uh, my computer couldn't handle them. And in general, it was, it was, uh, it was a mess. Secondly, uh, we considered Apple's then just announced self-publishing iBooks uh, platform. It was uh, probably, it still it is a way too closed of a format, like everything from Apple we have. So you really had to make many compromises and fit into their way of thinking. Yesterday, actually, I took a look at, uh, look at it and it seems it's getting discontinued by, uh, by Apple, going to be integrated in pages as it's uh, the screenshot on the bottom uh, reads. And the last uh, dead end was traditional text with access to videos through a QR code scanning. So in fact, this could have worked. Uh, however, it didn't tackle the second uh, challenge. Publication is still a slow business, uh, even with Jeroen on board, who was that time at Amsterdam UPN with whom we made contact at this stage. So we really reached out to you and, and brainstormed a little bit. We thought like maybe we want to sell this to Amsterdam UP, this whole project, if you remember. And, uh, and, and we've we considered still at this time, I think, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a book project. And let's, let's uh, see how it would uh, look with these QR codes. But somehow we dropped this idea as well. And maybe on this note, and this is certainly not, not the moment to, so it's not about Jeroen, so it's, it's, it just connects the story to, to, to say that uh, we've been really frustrated at this moment with Thomas, because it, it, we felt like it, it takes almost more time to figure out what's the really good platform addressing all these challenges or tackling all these challenges. Uh, it, it took almost longer than writing the whole book, which we just really like uh, at once it came out uh, uh, from us. So obviously it's an exaggeration, but not that far from reality. It, it took really a lot of uh, uh, important time because again, that was a very hot topic. It was very strong urgency. We knew there was a PhD in the make in Italy and in the UK as well at the time. So we wanted to be the first. So there was a certain pressure here. And indeed, as you, as you mentioned already, uh, our, choice, our choice went for Scalar, an online tool for uh, web uh, authoring. It ticked all the boxes we needed for the publication of this project, free and open access and fair use, 
media rich, uh, visually compelling, multiform, nonlinear, annotated, collaborative, flexible, easy to use, interactive uh, publication pl platform. So free and open access, it's free to use and also free to visit once you publish something. Uh, on it. It's media rich, it seamlessly incorporates websites, documents, audio, video files, which is clearly a huge asset for this specific project. It's visually compelling uh, also, aesthetic attractiveness is vital if you want to lock your readers to your digital screens with, as we learn, uh, shorter attention spans. It's multiform, so device responsive offering high compatibility with various devices you can read it on your phone even and it adapts nicely it's non-linear also important allows for and encourages non-linear reading to jump back and forth uh, depending on your interest or expertise you can jump parts which you think you are familiar with it's annotated multimedia richness with embedded websites documents audio video file annotations that are easy to access while reading it's also collaborative which was important since we wrote this book together essential again in case for co-authors each author's contributions are tracked so if you have any trouble at the end you know or <laughs> If, 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 if you lose your friendship while uh, making a, such a project, you could just trace back, you know, who did what. Or if you have criticism also, perhaps you can, you can sort out who answers what questions. It's flexible. Authors can update their books. Uh, it might be useful with rapidly evolving topics like videographic criticism, but I don't think we really touched it after we closed. So it's just an op option we never used. And easy to use. I think that was also very important. Again, I feel more or less text, savvy, but not as much as I could I could code or you know anything anything like that. So it, it felt like almost like a, a kind of a, a very user friendly blogging uh, platform. Um, you know, a scalar tagline, uh, try to quote, easy as blogging without writing and cutting and pasting code. So it's an easy one. And it's interactive too. At least the possibility is there. We did not use this uh, option in the book. So you could allow for allow comments, but we didn't want to do that for reasons I don't want to go into now. Uh, so I don't think we have time for the video, but here is a video for four, four minutes, uh, but you can just, just, you know, Google Scalar and click videos and you'll get the same kind of promo video, which more or less summarizes all these features, uh, but not tailor-made for this project, clearly. And maybe one more thing, this fair use uh, question, which came up, this critical commons little logo there. I think it's very important. Scalar is supported by easy to integrate fair use hosting opportunities like critical commons or the internet archive. So it's it's integrated in the in Scalar. So it's very easy to you know host things there and pull from there into this project. So you don't have to fight for but 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 simply practice your uh, fair use claim all your material is in safe hands in legally safe hands as well so that was very important for us again to to avoid uh, a, a, a project full with broken uh, links i mean there are horror stories in the videographic uh, community about you know disappearing videos there was a huge huge uh, 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 a blow when Fandor, one of the early video essay hosting uh, uh, journals, disappeared, and its disappearance disappearance meant two hundred videos disappeared uh, from 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 the net. So it's really nice to to know now that some of some of the videos uh, which we integrated in this project are available only via this book because they are not available anymore on YouTube or Vimeo due to copyright or whatever issues so i think that's one of the one of the values here so here is the here's the launch and i think you've been there uh, Jeroen, in 2016 i believe in potsdam it was launched in 16 july in potsdam during the next uh, conference and uh, that was my opening slide there and uh, well, this is uh, uh, thomas and me uh, making a flyer to advertise this so you know it's 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 nice to see, of course. Also, it's shocking uh, how much you you get older in six years. But the but the point here is, I think that uh, you know we could create these things without any bureaucratic and legal constraints. Of 
of a traditional route, which does usually not only delay, but you know, at the end, even discourage authors in this kind of enthusiastic creativity. So I think we really enjoyed ourselves not to ask any permission for any you know, material to use. We, we just did it uh, as, we, as we felt it right. And indeed, this is how it looks right now on the left, how it looks on your, on your, on your laptop or, or computer screen, on the right, how it looks on your mobile phone. Uh, it's, uh, it became the first comprehensive study on, on video essays. It's a media-rich ebook with almost 100 embedded videos and plenty of audio files, hoovering uh, notes and PDFs. It's a book one can read and watch in a variety of devices. Um, okay not going into details uh, about it. Uh, there is the overview of the book, which actually is, is a visualization of uh, by Scalar itself. Again, it's not for you now or for us now to, to, to understand and have a comprehensive view like what, what's written there. Maybe it's not even visible on your screens. It's more to see the structure and its nonlinear reading affordances of the platform. Uh, Finally, and I think this is uh, this is my last uh, slide. I hope it's still okay if I if I do this. Uh, there were these were the initial challenges we faced it, and there was a fourth additional challenge here, uh, and I think that's an important one. And I think this question was also mentioned in in, in the previous uh, previous uh, uh, conversations because this is important for us. This is this is a, this is a interviews with scholars. How to make this project project count as a proper academic output, right? So I mean, proper that is valid for tenure committees, line managers, or for, for an institution that uh, traditionally values textual uh, output. Well, um, well, beyond the fact that it was, you know, uh, it, it had an official launch presented as an academic book in an academic conference. So, you know, we, 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 sell, we sold it that way. I think there wasn't back then, and in fact, there still isn't any a guarantee for a project like this to be valued as a valid scholarly output. I think it was a bet uh, only and the, and, and the feeling of doing something right and valuable. And again, it was for, for us, it was more important to tackle all those challenges, challenges or tick all those boxes than to, to, to conform our project into, 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 a, into a, a traditional form or, or, or shoehorn it into, into a, into a, into a shoe, <laughs> so that was that was you know I didn't want to sacrifice uh, uh, the, the answers to those challenges uh, uh, for for some 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 traditional you know uh, absurdity because again it would have it would have looked very absurd with all the links or whatever H HTTP codes and so on uh, to link uh, audiovisual material. So I think it it remains a bet. The last time I reached out to Scalar to let me know about some visitor numbers, they couldn't provide me with that. Perhaps I should give it another try because I'm really curious. But uh, nonetheless, I have a very strong indirect indication about uh, the traffic it generated. So maybe we can talk about it later. I don't want to uh, use too much uh, of, your, of your time. So yeah. Yeah, I think uh, perhaps that's 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 all I I I wanted to to say. I certainly owe a lot to to Scalar and Critical Commons to you know to contribute to the well relative uh, success of this project. Okay, thanks, uh, Miklos. This is uh, really interesting, and I, and I I do remember that it was two thousand sixteen. So yeah, we we're growing old, right? Um, yeah, there we go. And. And it triggered a lot of things um, and the things you've been saying and presenting. Um, for instance, um, this QR thing, uh, I remember now, uh, it, it comes to mind now that um, uh, because we have been talking about this at, AUP, at, at, at when I was at Amsterdam University Press, um, talking about a book publication and then you were sort of, okay, the idea of having an online version and, and it, nah, it was complicated in the traditional sense, right? So. Uh, because those publishing houses are, well, yeah, uh, uh, they're paper driven uh, and an online project is difficult. At least it was five years or 10 years ago. I, I, as uh, also in the previous sessions, we've been seeing a lot of innovation there, um, I think. Uh, but this QR code, it was because of, um, we did an academic journal uh, in archaeology 
and we did a project with uh, a Dutch um, a repository, it's called Dans, uh, where archaeological data is stored. Um, and we did a project for articles um, uh, and enriching those articles with QR codes, uh, pointing them to the, uh, to the, to the data sets, um, mm -hmm. which at that time was revolutionary. Uh, now, with the Corona app for, or, or had the use of QR codes in, in, in anything, um, it, it could be something to, uh, to explore. Um, and this is a note for, for more, the more traditional publishers, I guess. Um, but you, what you already did is uh, the point four, because um, as you know, have, um, and for the, for the listeners, uh, I have been uh, mainly active as a commissioning editor in media studies. So, and I was one of the founders of the Nexus European Journal of Media Studies, um, and uh, which is also a journal that publishes uh, audiovisual essays for quite a few years now. And one of the issues here is uh, um, the quality or the quality control, so the traditional sense of peer review, um, because this is a new format. Uh, and what you are doing, what you have been doing with this book, is also very much at that time innovative and a new format. Um, did it? What, what did it brought you uh, besides having a, 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 um, an online version with um, all the material in there um, and not so much as I considered proper academic output? But maybe you can tell us something about, hey, did you receive community review, for instance, when it was published? Or how did you um, did a quality uh, review beforehand prior to the publication, for instance? Could you say something more about that? So yes, that goes back again in time and to a story. And to be honest, that these were, I mean, the, the start of this book, the writing of this book, were in my best years. And I think that's important to share. So that was a that was a moment when we had a reorganization at our department, and I was out of job for half a year. So there is like some weird Dutch law that uh, after a while you can't be, you know, pro uh, can't be reappointed. You have to wait half a year, and then you, your contract starts again. And I was super angry, to be honest. I was very frustrated, and I thought, like, okay, I'm playing out of the box here. I don't care about, you know, anyone's. Uh, uh, I, I wasn't even sure it's going to be an academic book. I thought this is an important book. This is something it really needs going to be on. there. Exactly, yeah. and and yeah. and maybe that really helped me, you know, to 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 to. This, this anger and frustration, you know, to, to make this happen uh, at all, because I knew that uh, Thomas didn't have uh, academic ambitions at all. He's a, he's a drummer in a band and he's, he's doing videos for a company. So he, he, he said, like, I backed him, like, please come, come stay with us, you know, for a PhD. No, he, 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 has, he doesn't want, he sees all the dark sides of the of the of the you know scholarly work and academia yeah, as we so all know yeah he's just too multi-talented to you know to, to settle for one thing so lucky him but i came back and uh, and uh, but anyway so so i as i said i i i i didn't care to be very honest about the quality assurance i thought like i, I will write it anyhow and we'll see what happens. And I think the bet paid off more or less. It's almost, uh, you know, without uh, bragging or something, but this work, as I said, is my hobby work. I receive more invitations to talks like this one, for example, about, about, about this work than my main line of research. So it's really frustrating to, to, uh, to, to, to be acknowledged for your hobby, right? Not for your you know, brilliant uh, ideas. So apologies for so, that. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, this is like it. I mean, this autumn, this is my fourth talk on videographic criticism, and I had one invited for for the other one. So I see, you know, the work also. It paid off the gamble. I think it paid off. Uh, I see you know, on many uh, syllabi. I I I I get emails from from colleagues I know and many I don't via you know Twitter or something direct messaging when when scalar is down and they 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 need access to it because of some maintenance or something and they need access to it and they ask like could you give me the, the original manuscript in a PDF or something I could share with my students or so. So I, I have as I said I don't have the, the raw data from, from scalar itself but I have a lot of indirect indication that this bet more or less paid off and you know um uh, uh, yeah this is this yeah. is more or less my my answer to that. 
Yeah. So it, and, and 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 therefore it's part of your scholarly record. Um, I think it right? it yeah. it is yeah. it is, and I claim yeah. it uh, on our on our website. Now I'm you know chairing our department, so it's easy to say uh, what what do we accept uh, or what not. But I have also a line manager, and and uh, you know you have to live up to certain certain uh, quality standards. But we all fight this fight, you know, to to make this work uh, acceptable and and valid. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess uh, another question I've, uh, um, and, and that's also uh, related to the, the whole audiovisual uh, essay uh, production. Uh, um, as you know, uh, and you already mentioned it, uh, some are using YouTube or Vimeo uh, as their platform, um, which I think in, in terms of academic uh, sustainable archiving uh, aren't the right places. Um, but, um, and, and, and your third question, how to make the project sustainable. I can, I, I think we can say, uh, or we can uh, touch upon this question uh, uh, two ways. So for um, the scholarly record in, in book publishing, that's the paper version that's being archived somewhere in a library or at the national uh, level, for instance. Um, so is it only available uh, on, a, on the scalar platform or uh, have you managed to do something else to make it long-term uh, preserved um, and the other question is about of course the media file um, so you already touched upon this um, but uh, is there a sort of agreement that this will be sort of uh, available for the longer term and and how, how does it work and how does it relate to scalar yeah, these are like the, the scary questions, of course, because uh, because I'm fully in the hands of scalar and critical commons and I just hope you know they will stay up and running and uh, i'm a lazy person so as long as uh, as they don't disappear i have of course the manuscript on my computer and backed up million times but you know as long as it's uh, not necessary i don't want to go back and face with this same questions once again and try to find another solution to them so so far i'm super glad that it works and again uh, there are those monthly one hours of maintenance you know uh, down moments when it is not available but uh, i think back in those days was i mean that was like really long time ago five six years ago uh, when when first I've seen uh, these uh, uh, places, then it was more of a, more of a gamble again. Like they were quite new that time, so they could have turned out to be just you know uh, some kind of technical fads. And uh, now I I, I believe uh, they are established platforms, which I see a lot of publishing since. Also, videographers like Jason Mittel uh, 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 published his his uh, book uh, a year or two ago on the very same platform. So I, I, I see that it's working, but I'm fully in their hands, to be honest. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's and, not, yeah. And, and so, and, and on the practical side, you, you don't, uh, or sorry, they, char they don't charge you anything um, to, to sustain or to, to preserve no. this, this uh, no. thing as a sort of don't, guarantee. Don't give them any ideas. I would say, but, uh, <laughs> no, I won't. But they, they don't. Um, the only only thing is that you need to have an educational email address through which you can you can uh, 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 subscribe to Critical Commons uh, yep. services. So yep. uh, you need to have a university. Yeah, and uh, what I also saw on the on the platform is that there uh, there are different versions, sixty nine at the moment, um, which I guess are uh, usually some of the smaller iterations after publication or going towards publication. Um, is it uh, how easy is it to to make an uh, um, like a new version? Um, it, is it still editable um, in a in an easy way? Yes, it's still the same as far as I, 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 I know. I'm a super vain person. So I went back and, and changed, for example, my last year when I got the promotion, oh, yeah. finally, I changed, <laughs> <laughs> I changed my bio in it. And it was just the same way as it, I, I did it five or six years ago when first time yeah. I, I edited this little blurb. So uh, it's, it, it keeps its, its basic functionality, even though indeed it, it offers more and more options as it, as it evolves. Okay. Um, Lucy has a question. Uh, how did you disseminate the work? Was it through word or uh, of mouth and your own networks or can it be accessed via any other platforms as well? Is it cataloged anywhere? 
Yeah, I don't know if it's catalogued anywhere. Uh, uh, to be honest, it's catalogued. At least on the in, on the Groningen website, it's it's catalogued. I think right. Exactly, and in our yeah. pure kind of you know repository, it's it's part yeah. of it and it's approved. So there is someone who is tracking those claims. What we you know feed the system and they approved it as a as a book. Uh, it's uh, what was the question? Yeah, how to how it was distributed, so it disseminated. Uh, well, we made this this launch, and I think that was a that was a good move. Uh, because next is big, at least in Europe, certainly uh, big. So it was, I think it was a, it was a good move. Uh, also, social media helped a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was a relatively small network in the very beginning of of uh, really a, a handful of, of scholars who who published. Yeah, were active about, in the field, right? Exactly, yeah. like Catherine yeah. Grant, Jason Mittal, Kristen Keatley, yeah. Kevin Bailey, and so on. And uh, and uh, so they helped also to 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 spread the word. They were also quite, you know, Cat and Grant specifically. I'm super grateful for because of uh, uh, you know, film studies for free is is is, is one of those cult uh, uh, sites Res yeah, which resources. Is, uh, and resources yeah. exactly, which 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 specifically focusing on freely available uh, scholarly work. So she really helped a lot. Yeah. To yeah. spread the word. Um, I guess there's a, there's another question and from Tom uh, has setting the example. So are there do you know of any colleagues or fellow peers uh, that have followed your your example um, in the last couple of years or making their own similar bets for their own projects? Yeah, I've seen uh, like uh, Jason. Uh, Jason Mitchell mm -hmm. again, who is really one of the one of the uh, seminal figures of the of the field. He also uh, the the quote uh, I I gave a definition of videographic criticism uh, a few slides back comes from a scalar publication practically. I think it doesn't. It, I don't did he did he wrote uh, when he finished a chapter and then he put it he put it online right was it that book yeah or? that was a that was. Not not just by a scalar, but indeed he was writing his book, uh, Complex uh, TV. TV, yeah. Complex TV, and uh, he was via another platform, indeed, uh, chapter by chapter. chapter, by chapter. He was yeah. writing, really released it, and people could comment it. So it was really nice yeah. to read in advance, practically a full chapter. And I remember we commented, and and uh, yeah, it's interesting. We share same interest for complexity, narrative complexity, mm -hmm. and videographic criticism as well. So our paths are crossing a lot. Cool. Um, question by Agatha Miklos, in the context of your work being on the cutting edge of media studies, what do you think is next in media studies? That is, what other innovations are you looking forward to? Oh. Or do you anticipate on? <laughs> oh. oh, that's wow. my addition. That's that's a very, very, I think that's a very, very difficult question, to be honest. I mean, I would not dare to, I mean, very much, if I see something, I'm, I'm, I'm very quickly, I, I quickly move, I have a feeling. So I, I want to see the new, the, 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 the new affordances of, of new platforms, new possibilities. I, I, I don't know, I, I know it's super loud, the TikTok film criticism, but I, I have, I keep my little distance from that. Maybe I'm just getting old. I remember like, some some it was in 2009 or 10 when, when prezi uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh appeared mm -hmm. and i remember i was like using using prezi in a conference in 2009 or 2010 really like no one knew it in the in the conference hall and then everybody was like also frustrating because everybody came to me afterwards like no one cared about what did i say but like what platforms did, platform did you use right so uh, I, I'm very, yeah. very careful to 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 embrace any new platform if I don't see it's functional for the needs, very specific needs what I have. So I'm I'm not a Prezi fan. I, I used Prezi back in that day because I was talking about narrative mapping in general. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that was that was very fitting to that project. Or here I use this format because uh, you know talking about. Of writing about videos that that felt uh, absurd so again that's why i reached out to and I'm, I'm, I'm otherwise i'm not searching i'm, I'm as i said i'm problem problem driven person so i have a problem then i search solutions and sometimes the solutions are are novel solutions yeah but i guess uh, also had the audiovisual essay um can be considered as 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 innovative way like an innovative way of 
uh, scholarly communication, right? So um, and moving away from the written article and do it, do it, doing it like this is is innovative in itself. I think. Yeah, already. that's what I told exactly that that moment in 2013, 14. Like this is really something yep. special yep. because it's a novel approach in a novel form to be published. That might be that might be useful or or, or yeah, well, important. Yeah. Um, I see a comment from uh, Elizabeth. I really like the approach in which it is a practical disciplinary challenge is leading to OA publishing. Uh, Miklos, you mentioned safe spaces of scholarship that allow you to sustainably and ethically host multimedia content and practice fair use. Can you tell us a bit more about your work experience with them? Is it Internet Archive and Critical Commons? Do you have any other suggestions or organizations in mind too? Now here it comes I, my 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 little warning at the beginning, and I'm very sorry that I'm I'm not an expert. I'm not really not an expert of the of this field, and I did not uh, go any further than finding a solution. And if that solution to my problem, if that solution was good, I was happy. Moved on to the next uh, next thing. So I'm very sorry, but I'm I'm really I don't want to pretend that I I know more yeah. about. But I guess this is this is uh, as you know, Nicholas. This is this is really also um, uh, an ongoing discussion, right, within media and communication studies. The the sustainable archiving of of yeah, all these um, yeah, films, uh, more or less, uh, with the national film archives, but for the yeah. YouTube and all these other the TikTok, all the other uh, media, um, the fluid media. Um, is is really um difficult right yeah of course and again yeah. I, i'm certain not that that's not my 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 uh, research activities so i'm no. doing very different things and then uh, there's the so do you think research that's also another comment but as with research uh, sorry do you think research data repositories like dance could also play such a role um What's yeah, so the na sorry. national archives. Yeah, it's the national uh, archive for research data um, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, and yeah, for if if you would ask uh, the question to me, I guess there there is a role for at least um, um, these archives um, to preserve at least some of the essential um, uh, media. Uh, uh, outputs, but it's 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 so it's so big, it's so immense that it's this is really an issue. Um, yeah. And also, Maybe if, want, yeah, sorry, yeah. yes, like what I was thinking about is more like this conflict between if you use a data repository, you solve many problems, like the team helps you to figure out legal issues, ethical issues, uh, long term preservation, citability, linking. Enhanced metadata. Met, yeah, yeah, rich metadata, aggregation mm -hmm. to scientific information management systems. Many challenges are solved on the one hand, but on the other hand, if you think about uh, the kinds of publication and the, 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 the uh, consumer, because I don't even say reader experience, the watcher experience that, that uh, Miklo's book is providing, you cannot really rely on solutions that are so weak in terms of presentation as a data repository should mm -hmm. be. So on the altar of long-term preservation, you trade this beautiful presentation layer and linking to data deposits may result in a much less satisfactory experience in terms of you know, interacting with the content as as, 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 as a solution that uh, you, Miklos, finally uh, decided to go for would do. And I think it's a major conflict in many humanities data types, not only in media studies, but also mm -hmm. with others. So you, you have long-term um, availability and fair data and open data and uh, this infrastructure things on one hand, but you have participatory nature, like the, the, the experience interactivity readability yes yeah. yes yeah. yes enjoyability like uh, mm -hmm. yeah on the other and this is a conflict that i see it's so difficult to to find a good balance for in in the humanities and honestly there are very very few solutions for that that i that i know mm -hmm. of. yeah 
Yeah, thank you. I mean, clearly <laughs> we have an expert here <laughs> who, 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 who probably who sees what I'm doing is a very naive and, and you know, uh, short. No, absolutely <laughs> not. No, 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 no. no. Really? Okay. Don't get me from my comments okay. uh, in, yeah. in, implied just the opposite. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I, I think so. Um, and, and not to, to enter too pessimistic with, uh, with this, but uh, and on the optimistic side, uh, we need these experiments, right, to learn and to see how how it could work um, and and how we could um, uh, achieve um, and preservation and sustainable archiving, but also um, uh, that we can use the material in a in a in a sensible way, right, and uh, in a good yes. way. Um, I guess that's the tension uh, Erzbert is, is 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 sort of uh, talking about. And uh, but we need these experiments that what does work and. I guess your own journey was also what does work and what doesn't. Um, um, and that's also really very, very helpful. Um, and also sharing these ideas today, I think helps others to, uh, yeah, uh, to learn. Let's hope. Let's hope. So with that, and also uh, looking at the time, it's already uh, more than 45 minutes, but um, um, I want to close to the, um, this uh, meeting. Thank you, uh, Miklos, for sharing your uh, ideas, um, your thoughts, and uh, your experiences. Uh, and thanks to uh, to the others for for listening and participating. Uh, and as said, um, um, we will publish the recording somewhere uh, in in a few days on the Humanities Commons website, and uh, there will be a written interview, a short written interview, uh, coming in the, in the next few weeks or so. Um, so with that, um, thank you for listening and um, have a nice day. See you hopefully at the fourth session in December. Thank okay, you so thank much. You. Thank you, Miklos. Thank you, Jeroen. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye you, bye. everyone. Bye-bye.